So I claim it is inevitable technology, like birds flying led to airplanes, like vacuum tubes led to silicon solid state electronics, that we are going to find a way to take the biggest energy source known to mankind and store it in the most dense form known to mankind. We're gonna find a way to make fuel directly from the sun. Because every study has shown that there are two big gaps. You can put all the PV and wind and all this stuff up, and if you can't find a way to store large quantities of energy, you don't have a system for that rainy day when the wind doesn't blow for 36 hours at least. If you don't have a way to get carbon neutral, high energy density fuel, not for those electric vehicles with yellow caps, but for the 40% of transportation globally that cannot be electrified, ships, heavy duty vehicles, and last time I looked, there's no such thing as a plug-in hybrid airplane, then you don't have an energy system. You can't meet emissions targets, you can't live sustainably, you don't need to know anything more about what matters than find a way to make fuel from the sun. If you did it at 10% efficient, you wouldn't trade land for food for fuel. This would be 20 terawatts. Everybody, even northern latitudes, because of the hour to a year, has plenty of sunlight if they can store it to meet their energy demands forever. Well, this is why the National Academy of Engineering just recently said the grand challenge isn't just to make solar energy economical, but find a way to store it by making chemical fuels the way plants do, but better. This is why Secretary Chu established an energy innovation hub, one in our country, the highest priority for the Department of Energy's basic science office, Office of Science, called the Joint Center for Artificial Photosynthesis that I am the director of, which will have 200 people. It has $122 million over five years to try to do what nature did, but we're gonna beat it at its own game. That's what President Obama called out in the State of the Union address when he said at Caltech, they're developing a way to turn sunlight and water into fuel for our cars. It is an inevitable technology. It's going to happen someday Better be sooner rather than later because of ocean acidification, because of CO2 concentrations, because of sustainability, because there isn't any other real choice. We know this works. We know there are certain minerals like strontium titanate, this one. When if you shine light on it, I may not be able to do this from this, oh, maybe I can. If you shine light on it in the sun, it bubbles hydrogen and oxygen out from water. We also have now catalysts that can make liquid fuel from carbon dioxide in the air directly from sunlight, air, and water. There are no wires, there are no bugs. That's our motto, no bugs, no plants, no wires, and beat nature at its own game. 